Hey guys, welcome back for another market update video this week. Um, before we dive into it, just want to ask you guys for a quick little feedback. I've really appreciated all the feedback you guys have given me thus far with these videos. My question is, do you guys prefer for me to continue to do these weekly videos or go back to the way that I used to do it where I would just do brokerage picks of the month? Um, I definitely enjoy doing these weekly videos. I think it's a lot of fun. I especially love the end part where I answer all the comments. Uh, but but anyways, leave a comment down below if uh, if you you know have any feedback one way or the next. If I should stay with this format or go back to how I used to do it a couple years ago. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the new listing. <laughs> Okay, so this week there were 41 new listings that hit the market. Um, you know, a couple boats I've already talked about. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right into them. So the first boat I want to talk about is uh, Zenobia, which is a 2016 Leopard 48 owner's version. Extremely well-equipped boat. Um, I sold it to our current owners a few years ago, and uh, they've done an exceptionally well, great job on upgrading it. It's got lithium, solar, they're completing the thousand hour service on the engines and generator. Um, very, very detail oriented owners on this boat. And I think it shows um, on the boat. So the photos we have on the listing are um, somewhat older photos, uh, but I will be traveling to the boat this week and getting updated photos. But uh, yeah, so much about this boat is nice. I mean, powered winches, um, upgraded B&G electronics, um, you know, plastic teak decking in the cockpit. You can see the custom scuba racks right here. Um, I mean, just everything about the boat is well thought out. Um, I mean, here you can see a great example. They uh, kept the old original Raymarine autopilot in place as a redundant system. So all in all, a really, really well equipped boat. And I'll have the full spec sheet in the description for this video. So check it out. The uh, second boat I want to check talk about for the week is a 2018 Fontaine Peugeot Sayona 47 located here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, really nice boat, solar, uh, bowsprit with a code zero, um, great electronics package, upgraded engines, um, upgraded generator, water maker, freshwater heads. I mean, the list goes on and on to hydraulic platform. Uh, just all in all, a really, really well-equipped boat. Um, here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for sale. Um, and then the third boat I want to talk about this week just hit the market literally as I was getting ready to hit the record button. And that's a 2017 Lagoon 450 uh, Flybridge located down in the Virgin Islands. A um, couple of reasons why I like this boat. I like the hard top. I like the fact that it's um, you know well equipped with solar generator, air conditioning, water maker. I've also been on the boat. It's part of a crude yacht charter fleet and, um, you know, really, really well maintained. Um, it's it's uh, the crude management company that looks after the boat is actually the local lagoon dealer. Um, so the bulkheads have been looked into as well. Uh, so all in all, I think it's a really, really nice boat. Um, so I'm going to have links to all of these boats in the description down below. Let's go ahead and jump into the price reductions. So this week there were uh, 37 price reductions. Uh, to be honest with you, none of these price reductions really um, caught my eye. I mean, there was, yeah, unfortunately just nothing that really looked that, that appealing or compelling in terms of a price reduction this week. Uh, I know you guys might find that annoying that I'm not really talking about any boats uh, for price reductions, but I'm not going to fill the um, video with dead air just to fill it up. Now, I do have one price reduction that's going to be coming a little later this week, and that's on my Lagoon 77 Telstar. We're currently asking $4.95 million. We are going to be dropping it to $4.75 million. Um, I'll have a link to the full listing in the description down below as well as uh, a link to the video I did with uh, my video guy, Sean, on it, which, which has got over 100,000 views and uh, been a very, very well done, uh, well-received video. Um, so unfortunately, that's really all we have to talk about for this week in terms of price reductions. 
Let's go ahead and move on to sold boats. So this week for sold boats, there were 20 reported sales on soldboats.com, and I want to talk about three of them. Uh, the first boat I want to talk about is Blow and Go, which is a 2014 uh, Leopard 48. As you can see down here, um, boat is coming out of the charter uh, operation in the BVIs with the moorings. It's a 2014, so it's got that lighter, and I'm sorry, the darker interior versus the lighter cherry wood interior. The main reason I want to talk about this boat is it was on the market for 2,300 days before it sold, and it sold for $400,000. <coughs> I think that's a really, really, I think that's a great price for this boat. Um, you know, I think a big reason why it got delayed uh, was because of the phase out process being delayed. I think that had this boat come to market um, and been available um, today, it'd probably sell for closer to $500,000. So I think whoever bought this boat definitely bought it right. She was asking four thirty nine. dollars she ultimately sold for $400,000. Now, the next boat I want to talk about is a Leopard 48 as well. A little bit newer boat with a lighter interior, but I think this is a much better indication on where the current market is for Leopard 48, which this particular boat was asking $549, and it ended up selling at $591. Uh, so whoever bought Blow & Go, I think definitely got a great buy. And I think whoever bought uh, Dallas Blonde, got a market buy so not a great buy not a bad buy uh, but in general just a reasonable buy on a leopard 48 coming out of charter the third and final boat i want to talk about this week is ecstasy 2 which is a leopard 46 this boat was used for crude yacht charter um, i've been on it in the past really nice boat well equipped well updated uh, but the main reason i want to talk to that talk about this boat is the Leopard 46s have essentially showed minimal or almost zero depreciation since 2017, uh, which is pretty wild to think. I mean, everybody talks about boats as a depreciating asset. You know, this boat, when it sold last time, sold for, you know, around $400,000. And now it's selling again at four hundred thirty-five. dollars um, it's, it's absolutely wild to watch. Um, the fact that Leopard 46 is not just Leopard 46s, but a bunch of other models for that matter have retained their value so well. But I think this is just a really, really clear example of that. In fact, let me let me see if I can find this particular boat real quick and soldboats.com. 2009 Leopard 46. Let's see what it sold for previously. Let me just go through here. So this is what this is what the porthole looks like for um, for soldboats.com. So let's see, Leopard, and let's type in 46. Um, sailing catamaran, 46. It's not an owner's version. It's just to 4600. I like to kind of always um, take a, a broad stream of boats. Let's see, make. Oh, Robert. Okay, Leper. Yep, that's selected. A uh, year that boat was a 2009, 2009. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, there's been nine 2009 Leopard 46s to sell. Uh, this one being the most recent one, which sold for 435. And uh, let's see. Let's see if this is it. Nope, that's Elixir. Hmm. I'd have to do a little digging around here and find if I can find it. I'll try to add it to the um, Zoe. No, nope, that was a different boat. But yeah, I mean, look at this in 2017, a uh, X charter uh, crude yacht boat. Oh, no, sorry. Zoe was a private boat with four cabins um, or crude yacht boat that had a lot of work done. But look at this. This boat in 2017 sold for three hundred twenty thousand dollars. In today's market, it would probably sell for $400,000. So anyways, it's just super interesting to me. Certain models have done better um, than other models. And boats like the Leopard 46, 
Leopard 48, Lagoon 450, Helia 44. Those boats have all done really, really well when it comes time to, um, you know, in terms of depreciation. So let's go ahead and jump into my final section of the video, which is the question and answer and arguably my favorite section to do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the Q&As. The uh, first question we're going to answer this week is from Bill. He goes, how does boat location affect the sales process? I've heard that half of all worldwide catamaran sales take place in South Florida and that it can be really difficult to get buyers to travel far to far away locations. Several brokers have also said that it can be very difficult for American buyers to survey, finance, close deals in Europe or Australia. If I'm buying, can I get a deal far away? And if I'm a seller, should I move, to boat, move the boat to Fort Lauderdale? Okay, so to answer that question, location does have an impact on the market or on the, the saleability of a boat. Um, the market's been a quite hot market for the last you know couple of years. And so location has had less and less of an impact on buyers uh, just because there's been less inventory. I think as we get to you know uh, a little bit more of a, a buyer's market than we are right now, I think you may get a better deal buying a boat um, in a more far-flung location. Now, there are exceptions to that rule today. For instance, if you go to French Polynesia, um, that tends to be the cheapest place in the world to buy a boat, but it's also extremely expensive to not only get to to survey a boat and do your personal inspection, but also if you're planning on cruising, it's a very remote location to start your travel. So historically speaking, yes, you could get a good deal on a boat if you bought it far away. Um, you know, there was a YouTube video that another broker did years ago on um, you know the cyclical nature of buying and geographical benefits of buying a lot of that's kind of gone away i mean things tend to not slow down anymore during the hurricane season and you tend not to get that much better deal in the caribbean versus north america um, now if you are a seller your boat will sell quicker and for more money more than likely if it is in south florida it'll also be easier to get your boat ready to sail to sell here in south florida because of the marine facilities available to you as a boat owner. Um, so if you are selling a boat, bringing it to South Florida will yield you a higher number, and it'll also be much easier to get your boat in a showable and sellable condition than if it's in a far-flung corner of the Caribbean. So the next question I wanna jump in is from Jack Dickerson, and he wrote, how well will a good battery solar array run an HVAC while at an anchor? I think maybe good reason to have a gen set as a backup only. We kind of talked about this question a little bit last week. And, um, you know, with battery, inverter, and charging technology being what it is today, it is far more realistic and obtainable to run your generator overnight with solar air conditioning. I mean, there's boats that are designed to actually be completely electric, like the Silent Yachts or Solar Wave or the Serenities. Um, some of the new sun reefs and, and whatnot. But for the average cruising catamaran, it is becoming much more obtainable. I was actually at Lauderdale Marine Center last week just walking the docks and uh, talked to an owner of a brand new Naughty Tech Open 46 who went with a complete 48 volt system of uh, lithium batteries running through some rather sizable inverters. And then I think there were six kilowatt um, alternators on each engine that would peak up to nine kilowatts. Um, some pretty high-tech, cool stuff that he had added to the boat, which completely negates the need for a generator, in my opinion. So I think as the technology improves, we're going to see less and less need for a generator. Okay, so the next question is from Tad P. And he wrote, as a vast majority of cats are used to cruise tropical, warmer waters, is there any way in which you'd spec out boats differently if they were to be primarily used in New England, north of the Cape. Um, what, what we normally see with boats, mainly production catamarans, um, or just catamarans or boats in general, I guess for that matter, is when they are up north and they're not cruising south, a lot of those owners will opt out of air conditioning and go with a diesel heater type system. That's really the biggest difference in outfitting a boat for, for higher latitudes is kind of your your 
HVAC system, for lack of a better term, your heating and cooling. If you're north of Cape Cod or, or the, you know, yeah, Cape Cod, um, Long Island Sound, et cetera, et cetera, you can probably get away without air conditioning. Now, the reality of it is if you're buying a boat uh, brand new and you're ordering and you're deciding, should I go with generator? Should I go with air conditioner? Um, because I'm going to be sailing the boat up north. It's probably worth ponying up the extra money to have an air conditioning system on the boat because when you go to sell it, it is quite challenging to sell a boat without air conditioner. So our next question is from uh, Martin Santurum, San, Santurton, and he wrote, Hey Wiley, I'm looking for a privilege 615 or 585. I'm wondering if there are a few to get... I wonder if there are a few... I wonder if they are a few to get in the market. You almost never show privilege uh, catamarans. So the reason that you don't see privileges featured that often is they are a limited semi-custom production boat. I literally get probably three or four emails a week from people saying, hey, I'm in the market to buy a Privilege 585. And it's because of sailing Zatara. It's actually really, really quite funny or interesting to me. I get emails from people every week and it's almost the same thing. Hey, I'm in the market for a... Privilege 585, or I'm in the market for a Leopard 46. And usually it's in the same email, which tells me you guys are fans of Nick and Megan O'Kelly on Clarity, as well as Keith on Sailing Zatara. Um, the reality of it is the reason I don't talk about privileges that much is they just didn't build a lot of them. These boats were all semi-custom built boats. And um, you know, to put it in perspective, the Privilege 585, they only ever built 24 of them. And of those 24 built, I know three that are no longer with us. Uh, there was a boat up in New England, BR-5, that burned to the waterline because of a lithium battery issue. And then there were two 585s lost in Hurricane Irma and Maria in the Virgin Islands. That brings the market cap down to 21 privileged 585s globally. So finding a good 585 at a fair and reasonable price for or what most people consider a fair and reasonable price is quite challenging because they just didn't build that many of them. That means they must have built a number of 615s and those must be way more readily available. Actually, in fact, they didn't. They only built, they only built 21 privileged 615s. Um, and of those 21 privileged 615s, I know of four of them that are no longer with us. Uh, one that hit a reef in Canawan, two that were destroyed in uh, Hurricane Irma and Maria, and one that um, had another electrical event that, that caused a fire. So that brings the total down from 21 privileged 615s to only 17 615s, uh, which, which is really not a lot of boats, which is part of why they sell for so much money. Now, if I had the choice between buying a privileged 585 or a privileged 615, I would go with the 615 hands down. I think the 615 is quite possibly one of the most beautiful and well-designed and well-built catamarans of all time. Um, I've said that time and time again, and I just love the Privilege 615. So there you have it. Those are the questions for the week. If you have any questions for next week, leave a comment down below. Shoot me an email. I'll have all the um, descriptions for the boats we talked about or all the, the specs for the boats we talked about in the description down below. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email, leave a comment. And as always, if you like what I have to say, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks and have a good day.